I thought overall this trade show, like fast. this fast train just started going off the rails, man. And it got dug. This week on the Dynasty Trade Show. This process play, this is the right move by you. Can this work out for Redwoods? Absolutely. Maybe you introduce him to the warp tool and you're like, listen, you see this? Christian McCaffrey's, he's Neo. He's the one. <laughs> You over the top, buddy. That's how Seven. orphans are formed. Scooter will be posted in the Discord here in 12 months. It doesn't have a first until 26, but it'll be okay. <laughs> that was savage. That ain't right. That's some really complex deals. I would struggle, Mike. Forget the third. Just giving up an 811 for a future second, frankly. Evan Ingram, DJ Moore, James Cook, Debo Samuel, Kenneth Walker. Four. Jordan Addison, 203, 109, and we've got 225 first. Where does your brain go just like immediately off the rip when you're looking at this trade? So immediately I try to match stuff up, right? Try to keep up while Mike and Adam break these down for you. Forty chess. Yeah. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Let's get it. Yo, is that t dog? Forty chess. This a trade show, Patreon where the trades go, tap in and watch, that's what you came for, ain't gotta say my name, they know my name, bro. What's good, man? We got McNutted in ATM, always start off the show with a trade from them, you should always make sure that your trade is in, Patreon, why not be a Patreon, know you wish you could spend every day with them, tap in and say what you gonna say with them, stop home and fill up a stadium, next time you log in, make sure that you bring a friend, we about to kick off, let the day begin, go follow the socials, 40 Chess FF is posted. If your trade is an F, you get roasted. Go like and subscribe for the crew. Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube. You know Cooper got the wall too. Let us give you a walkthrough. 40 Chess. This is 40 Chess. What's up, everybody? Welcome back into the dynasty trade show so glad you could join us quick reminder if you want your deals featured you want to get roasted you want to get praised it's a toss-up it's a mystery box kind of just like our sponsor ultimate autographs but if you want to be on here patreon.com forward slash south Harmon, five dollar tier get you access to the trade channel you can drop them in there and by the way how about the segue to ultimate autographs partners signed sh.it get Go you get some signed shit one of those mystery box breaks, which I have won an extensive amount of dope ass shit. <laughs> now, uh, the shit you're wearing isn't signed, I don't believe, but they got a Chris no, Alave. I'm not in that the house? crazy. Yeah, I'm not that crazy. Chris Alave. Looking good, Ultimate. man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I got you, buddy. I got yeah. you. Yeah, the Ohio State for the Dynasty Trade Show. Go check those things Synergy. out. Synergy. We're synergetic. Ooh, we're synergized, you know? We're I'm synergized. Teach vocabulary. Hence, hence their abilities. <laughs> I, vocabulary is normally not my strong suit, but today we'll try, Mike. Uh, today we'll try. Speaking of trying, let's see what you think. Did I get tried, or do you like my deal? Yes. I don't know. I'm just going with a blank answer. All right. Well, we're going to give you a chance to tell me what you think. So this is uh, Best Ball Star 13. It's shit for Mike, I'm in a rebuild. I love the off-centeredness of this. At first. Right. Pretty awesome. <laughs> there we go. How about this one? All right. There you go. <clears throat> Speaking of off center, was my deal off center here, Mike? Uh, Jalen Polk, I took it to three hundred one, and Redwoods has apparently has been sniffing up Jalen Polk shares. Like he, he's you know he's got a addiction. Apparently, he, he really right. believes in Polk. So, uh, Mike, I'm taking what I believe was the best ch- chance of his seconds. He had two twenty five seconds. Would you rather have Jalen Polk uh, pre NFL draft here with the opportunity for you know landing spot, draft capital, everything we know about him, or would you rather push out? the pick to the second round in 2025 two two points of analysis here i'll give you on this one bonus one for the kickoff for your trade adam i got you Boom. um process play let me just say this process play this is the right move by you pre-nfl draft trade jalen polk a finite asset for just a generic 25 second push it out of year good play good process play can this work out for redwards absolutely 100 second point jalen polk on the player analysis is a guy that i am a fan of um, we put on the tape to scout Washington and watch, you know, Roma Dunze and Michael Penix. Like, Jalen Polk stood out. But the caveat, the longer we have gone on in the process, the less and less of a fan of Jalen Polk I have become. 
Not because I don't think his game was, you know, not good. Like, I think he has some traits. Like, my comp to him is kind of a Jacoby Myers-esque, right? Yeah. But but a lot of things have to go right for Jalen Polk. Now, you're kind of seeing some of these uh, rumors of maybe he's a first-round wide receiver. I think there was a mock draft that came out today I saw from somebody that. pretty big. Who was that? Uh, yeah, I, I actually was. I was yeah, but, Peter Sh- There you go. I was just looking at it, uh, I don't know, probably two hours ago. Yeah. And, and by all accounts, for, for most people, they're going to tell you that Schrager's pretty tapped in, right? To the I mean, NFL space. So he, I, he definitely I, I'm is not among it's complete bullshit. He, he has some sources. I I don't. I wouldn't say he's crazy. Here, here's my biggest problem: if Jalen McMillan doesn't get hurt and battles a lot of injuries last year, do we really know who Jalen Polk is? Because two years ago, it was just the McMillan and Odunze show. <laughs> sure was. Last year, it was just the Polk and Odunze show. And the only common denominator is Odunze <laughs> out of those two, right? Yeah. Jalen McMillan in his own right is very, very good. Now, if you go back and you watch 22 tape on Washington, Adunze is going to stand out to you, and Jalen McMillan, you're going to be like, man, he might even be better than Adunze. Now, that's not where we're at today. I'm just saying maybe that number two option in that offense is getting a little bit more love because Roma Adunze was the the dude, <laughs> that dude. and it made He was it so really like that. So – I'm kind of fading Jalen Polk as we go longer into this process, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to reflect that here when I sit down this weekend. You're watching the Dynasty Trade Show, so if you're a member of the Patreon, the the, uh, the tier that gets rankings, mine will be updated this weekend, and I have every intention of flip-flopping these guys, Polk and McMillan. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. I, by the way, uh, I, I think McMillan is someone that's a little more – I'm a little more intrigued as a sleeper than I once was when I started the process. Actually, Mike went back and looked at uh, you. You were the one that told me about this. I'll never forget. Like, come on, man. You, you called him discount, great value, Roma Dunes or something like that. One of these discount days. JSN, great value there you JSN. Go. JSN. And I was like, man, I don't see it. So I went back and looked. Uh, shout out a little all twenty two from twenty two, Mike. And I, you weren't you weren't really wrong. I actually, looks solid. Jalen Polk for me, Mike. I actually still like him. Um, I'm not for sure. overly in on Jalen Polk. But I, I mean, I drafted him at 301. I'm like, all right, like 301, let's go. Jalen Polk, absolutely. Wasn't even a, it was about as quick as a draft pick I could make at the 301. But then, Mike, you know, you get, you start getting offers, right? <clears throat> so at your 301, you start getting a couple thirds in your, your DMs. You start getting someone that's hitting you with multiple offers when you're just declining with no counter. And, Mike, what, you know what that does? Let's me know that you really want the player. So I'm like, all right. You make it a second in 25, so I turn my 301 into a generic second next year. It's a process play at this point, <clears throat> and I know Redwoods is someone that listens to us and wasn't going to let, you know, I'm not going to be able to get Redwoods to give me something astronomical, you know, a, a second in 25 and, a, and his other second in 25 or something banana. So I just I just took the profit of Mike, not necessarily, when I say the profit, it's not necessarily actualized profit from what Jalen Polk could be after the draft day. <clears throat> but it was when I simply press the button on him at, him at the 301, if I can turn my 301 into a generic 25 second, that's a, that, that to me is a process play pivot that I will make every time. And, and Jalen Polk, to your point, Mike, could end up being, we could look at rookie warp at the end of the year and he could be the 111, 112 on, in rookie warp, right? <clears throat> and you could look back and be like, man, you sold out of Jalen Polk light. And I will tell you straight up, there's going to be some cases where I sell out of all kinds of players, rookies in particular, light. But if you take a look at my whole portfolio and if I just do this process, I'm going to bet on myself winning out on those trades over the long haul if you looked at all of them, Mike. So that's kind of how I make this trade here. Not a overly, um, you know, crazy one to start us off, but I feel like it was warranted to discuss it. I'll also say this, Mike. Let me just say last thing. If you pull up warp in this league, I, I think with the point two points per carry, best ball, start 13. Like I like Jalen Polk, but he wasn't somebody that I'm like – Man, I can't have. I can't let this guy go. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a it's a range of outcomes trade, right? Yep. Like it really is. If the first round thing is a, a miss, you took an L. Hundred percent. If he's a second, third round wide receiver, probably a push. If he's anything less than that, it's a dub, big dub. So, yep. Interesting that you guys are making this one right now. Uh, both of them, like on both ends of the spectrum, I would say from the process, I'm probably more likely just to lean your side and just. Yeah, I'm gonna have more wins than I am gonna have losses at this point. That that's that's basically where I was at, right? Like, it's not that I don't want this Jalen Polk share. It's just that I think I'll just say this too, Mike. <clears throat> Last point, actually, I, I wanted to make on this. Uh, I'm glad you somehow what you said triggered my my brain to say this. Let's say Jalen Polk hits next year, Mike. 
<clears throat> let's say this year Jalen Polk's one of these rookies that looks good. Okay. What do you, what do we think that looks like in warp or what do we think that actually means to a team in dynasty? I mean, and I, I'm saying like, let's give him a hit. Let's give him, you know, like he's decent. You got to be like, think about this. This is kind of like if at this time, a couple of years ago, you would have taken uh John Dotson and paid a future second for him. There you go. Right. Like that's a, that's a dub John Dotson <laughs> yeah. pre NFL draft. Like, Still, like, in the the grand scheme of things, like, what are you missing out with the dude who's the second? You could argue that if you would have done this back in the Jahan Dotson draft class that initially after the draft and then at moments during his rookie year, maybe post his rookie year, you were like, ah, I won this trade. And now you fast forward a couple of years and you go, did I? <laughs> did, I did I actually win? Right. So, so really, like, it's just riding that fine line where – in the end of the day, the tiebreaker for me is just going to be the liquidity and push it out one more year. Give me well, that flexibility, <clears throat> that roster flexibility. That That's kind of where I was at too, Mike. And, uh, um, I'm going to pull up Warp here on this league just to give us an idea. I mean, All like right. a hit, what would be <clears throat> wide receiver 36? Yeah, that's what I'm kind of saying. Like, well, what what does that actually look like? So if you look at wide receiver 36, that's roughly, wide rec- that's roughly the rookie 12. I think that's fair, right? Yep. Yep. He's a top 10, 12 rookie in the class, let's say. Which would be a dub. Be yeah. For him. Mike, can't I, with a 25 second, buy somebody in this line north or at least at minimum even of wide receiver 36? Yes, you could at you minimum? buy multiple guys in that range. And there's a chance that if he doesn't hit, I can buy Deontay Johnson type. Like, and very, very <laughs> likely those RBs from like 18 to 24. Sure. That's probably me, their cost. Right. And and using warp as the tiebreaker, Mike, that was where I'm like, I'm not ready to go number one. But let's say that I, you know, just make the process plays and eventually I decide I'm ready to go. What am I probably looking to buy with this second in this league? Running back. <laughs> yeah. Stop cap. Right. Give me one year rental <clears throat> when I'm ready to push. Jalen Warren types. Give me, you know, Tajay Brian Spear Robinson. types. Brian Robin. Who? James Connor. Give me insert your name running games. back. That that's that's the play that I think the reason I make the side I make, Mike, is is simply that. That's thousand percent. The downside, can I? Because here's the thing: if I keep the Jalen Polk side and he doesn't make this list, do you know what happens to him? <laughs> you know what happens Almost, to this pick value? It's gone. Bye bye, your Audi five thousand, my friend. <laughs> Audi five thousand. See ya. <laughs> this isn't even a judgment call. You're fired. <laughs> All right. I like it. This is a good one to start off with, though. But I want to hit it with two prongs, right? The the player analysis and but yeah. the process play is correct. Yep, definitely. And I don't. Redwoods might even he he said something in the chat like I'm buying as much Jalen Polk as he as he can. He might just Look be. At the guy, man. He's he might that just convicted. He might just say I'm you know I'm I want Jalen Polk. Give me Jalen Polk. All right, Mike. Interesting trade here. So we got uh, Kyler Murray and Puka Nakua for a second. So Kyler Murray versus Puka in a 25 second. We'll keep the 25 second on theme here. 12-team Superflex PPR, half tight and premium, lineup start 10. Where do, you, where do you land on this side, Mike? What side do you land on, should I say? So without knowing Warp, right? Because that's going to play into it. Warp and League Dynamics. Warp's going like to play a huge into this, correct? Every day of the week, it's going to be the Kyler Murray side for me. Just without generically. Without the full context. Right. Yep, yep. And our good friend Shane Manila talks about this all the time. A lot of trades, a lot of discussion around Dynasty is talked about with zero fucking context whatsoever. Correct. And you and I both know with the Warp Tool and how long we've been doing this and how in-depth you get, you can look at a trade like this, it pops up on your screen, and I'll tell you right now, if you, if you told me this is all I had, Adam, I'd tell you it's the quarterback. <laughs> Night and day. No now fucking what? question. Now when you pull it up and you get some context... All of a sudden, this quarterback line, this is multi-year quarterback too, right? We're not even this is talking five about years, the dog right. shit 2023 that we just experienced. This is five years where we had some really good quarterback years in there. Correct. This, data this, set. this only accounts for that dog shit year, Mike. That's 20% of the of the, what weighs into this, right? This is a five-year line. So this, this tells you that the quarterback line ain't it relative to the skill players in this format. We just watched Puka come off a really good year as a rookie, right? I also think Kyler can get back into that top five quarterback territory. Like that's not a stretch. Correct. There is some there is something to quarterback scarcity where as you see this wide receiver line is high for a long fucking time, right? Meaning the wide receiver class is deep. However, if I was going to make a bet and send away a quarterback the warp line better look like this for a wide receiver. A Big time. Yeah. It better look like this. This this and line, Mike, is you what you would need in, to see to make the trade. 
you have he to got do the this. he got the extra like the insurance added on top with that pick <laughs> yeah I, I think what makes it crazy mike is that um when i'm looking at this line and then i look back at the trade okay the reason i think it's I, the downside of puka like if you tell me this is one for one even mike i might have a hard time even with that warp line frankly it, it, right, because of the <clears throat> positional scarcity of the quarterback. Positional scarcity and, injury. like, the downsides, I think, that are potentially baked into Puka, which is what if Stafford really drives a lot of his value? What if this McVay offense is a big part of why Puka can score elite? Not saying that elite that, – that, uh, elite. Not saying that Puka shouldn't be valued like an elite receiver, but <clears throat> I think there's some inherent risks right now with Puka's cost. Where Kyler, to me, Mike, is on – more of the downswing of the cost. I think there's more to attain upwards for Kyler Murray. But the big thing, Mike, is when I go back and pull this up just quickly again, you see that green line? That green line, to me, makes the Puka side worth it because, again, what I just talked about in that last trade. If I got Puka now, and then I can go buy a running back with that second that is ahead of... We're talking, Mike, there's probably running backs you can buy that are ahead of top 12 quarterbacks in this league based on work. Easily. <laughs> So 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 now so now I think the process play in this format with this scoring is to take the two for one. Here's the other thing: roster context comes into play. Not only is the warp coming into play, can but you yeah, give us that? I don't have it pulled up, so give us that. That'd be great. So he's rocking Jalen Hurts as his QB one, <clears throat> pretty good. Okay. Um, his QB two now is going to be Jared Goff or and or Bryce Young, and he also has the 104 in this class potential for another quarterback if he want. He was very deep. Now, when you look at a roster construction, it's a lineup start 10, Adam, right? You know where hammers need to come into play. You need elite scorers in multiple positions. Now, I'm always going to favor the quarterbacks, right? Like, I want to make sure I got QB1 and 2, and boom, like, fuck you. I got two top five, top six options. You guys are going to have a tough time catching me. But, however, his little roster was lacking severely in wide receiver punch. And I'm being nice by saying punch, right? DK Metcalf's a guy you and I like. But outside of that, it was George Pickens. Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore, maybe that 104. Like, this is where all of a sudden you go, fuck. (laughs) I don't have these hammers in a league that really favors wide receiver hammers at the top in a lineup start 10. So I need to do something to get into that. And if it's, even if it's pivoting off of Kyler Murray, like the the total context, the, the roster construction that he currently had, the warp, everything lends me to go like this was a heady move by Christian. It really was. And it's tough because when you look at it on the surface, like I started off the trade, you just give me this in a vacuum. You tell me it's a 12-team super flex lineup start 10. Knowing what I know, I would go, man, you're nuts. <laughs> you're nuts. You're nuts. You're right. nuts. And this is where the danger zone comes in if you don't have access to some of this tools or some of these ability to do a little bit more in-depth analysis. Like what is really scoring me fantasy points mm-hmm. and where do my wins come from? Because – Honestly, Adam, if I was sitting there and I didn't have access to Warper, I didn't have access to like the lab and you'd, and, like, you'd fight really this doing to the back. nail no matter what. Christian would send me this trade and I'd fucking snap accept it, and it's a it's a net negative for me. Like right. it's really bad for me. Now the interesting thing I I didn't look. I want to see how Ego, Eg, EGP Ego. I don't know EGP <clears throat> EGP thirteen. I like that. So this dude is now rocking a Rich and Kyler as his quarterbacks, and he had no third and. He has the 103, so he possibly could have gotten a quarterback there for his QB2, but then you're relying on a rookie, wide receivers. He was Devontae Smith, JSN, Godwin, JMO. So he's kind of in the same boat as Christian. I would have I would have stayed. I would have just taken Daniels. If Hell you really want to have – Mike, give me Daniels, right? And I'll stay Give me Daniels, and I'll plug him into my super flex. And, there yeah. you go. Yeah. And you, you could even probably make the case, Mike. Let me just tell you. Let me tell you, too. With this warp line – if you don't have a top 12 one, you just don't probably have one. Like, why just quarterback 18 at the worst? I bet you there's a chance you could end up patching together in a league like this. Just find some dudes. Just find a couple gross super flex options and just give me, at 103, Mike, give me Rome. Give me, <laughs> you know, give me Marv. Give me this whoever. Kind of feels like, this kind of feels like one of those leagues in 2023 where the, the winner probably had, you know, Joe mm. Flacco and Jay oh. Browning. A thousand percent. A but they were stacked percent. with C D Lamb and, you know, Christian McCaffrey and like all these other league winners at different spots and their their quarterbacks were like, Ew, fuck gross. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean for sure. I think that and I'll tell you, Mike, can I tell you something else too? In this in this league, I'd be a little more aggressive shooting shots and running backs in this class too in, in drafts. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Shout out too, man. Christian playing in some leagues with some guys that I recognize, man. Uh, David uh, Gautieri, I think I'm saying his name. Yeah. Wrong, but I've seen him on Twitter quite a bit. <clears throat> yeah, uh, he, he is on Twitter league. quite a bit. Yep. He's in this league, coincidentally, the number one dynasty ranked team and the number one redraft <laughs> ranked team. So he's got a. Did he win? He, I don't know if he won or you not. I don't see the record, but his roster looks really fucking good. <laughs> looks like it might have won. This is a boy who's been doing work. No well, picks in 24, but he's rocking uh, Mahomes and uh, Mike. Lamar, Hawk, Amon Ra, Garrett Wilson. We're starting <laughs> off with a trade show that might be, is Puka really like that? Because mm. here we go, buddy. <clears throat> Puka Nakua is back. Two out of the uh, first three, right? Could, could, we, could we fit the uh, the Kendrick Lamar in there? You that, know, the I'm, I'm actually thinking, yeah. Like I put that in the last trade show uh, with Amon Ra, but that'd be great to have Kendrick Lamar in there. I really would like that. <laughs> I'm really like you know, that. So, something to the effect of MF the big three. <clears throat> it's just me. <laughs> Dude, let's go. <clears throat> I tried to do we, that. We got, a big, we got a big three at the top, right? I tried to Jeff do that with Chase does Amon Ra belong in the big three? And I had him. I'm really like that. I don't know if people caught that from last trade show, but let me let's put Kendrick in there this gotcha. time with Puka. By the way, Mike, Puka, Kyle Pitts, Joe Mixon, and a third and twenty five. Or do you want Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith in a second and twenty five? So Mike, second Jim to third Smith swap. Coming in hot. Yeah. So basically, you go up from Devontae Smith to Puka, if you call it that, right? <clears throat> then you go Joe Mixon and Kyle Pitts for Jalen Waddle. And then you go, you drop down from a second to a third. Uh, Twelve team superflex full PPR. It's a full point per catch, so it's a two point uh, per catch on a tight end premium. 0.25 points per carry to Juice Mixon if you believe in Mixon at all. Lineup start ten dynasty degens. Drew Smitty was uh, almost late to class with the, the league name. We got it here, very last second. Mike, where are you at on this one? I think I'm taking the Drew Smitty side pretty easily. Um, now my first question when this popped up, right? yeah, because there's two ways of, of looking at this. When the when the trade happens, right? With sleeper, <laughs> what do you got? I just see well, the smirk. I just see the smirk. Well, no, no, just with sleeper, right? Like there's a uh, either this trade was done ahead of time, right? And Drew Smitty went and pulled mm-hmm. the trade details after all the picks were made, and that's why you get the names. Uh, or this was out after all of this stuff had already been picked, right? And then we're <clears> making all these swaps, right? So I, I was interested to see which one it came from. Right. No, no, I'm with you. Like, was this a generic trade value? Like, the, basically, did Drew Smitty go get at the 302 Puka sitting there? Made the trade, and these none of the, these are none of these are names, right? These are all just right. assets. That would be interesting. I'm intrigued by uh, with your wanting to know. I don't think that we can, unfortunately. But uh, Drew, Drew would have to tell us, and he'd have to be on it. <laughs> yeah. No cap. No. Don't try to leave the league name out again. All right. <laughs> what can we trust from this guy anymore? I'll say this, though. A lot of people fall into this trap of wanting to trade up in the mid-rounds of startups, like to increase their their fifth to a fourth, their sixth to a fourth. They want to do shit like that all the time. And I would say that's probably, Adam, there's some content for you right there. There's some BDG. I'm putting it on a platter. One of the biggest (laughs) mistakes you can make in a dynasty startup is to value mid-round picks more than, you know, another mid-round pick. Because in reality, it's the same shit. It's the same shit for multiple rounds. And you've probably you know, seen those guys, dynasty value, go kind of like this. You look maybe two years ago, and those guys were drafted in the spot you're drafting someone else now. Back to our old school roots, which we really haven't updated in forever, but I can tell you probably still really applies, the startup heat map, where there are blocks where it's basically the same shit. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. You're talking nah, minute doesn't. differences, and it's personal preference. But when you go and you give multiple things like this, like that eighth rounder seems, who gives a shit, Adam? But you and I can both build a competitive roster with a lot of eighth round picks. Right? Well, <laughs> with the a thing lot about of eighth round picks. The thing about this one though is that like, <clears throat> I could understand. I could make a. Let's say the assets are not what we're reading. Okay, and let's say you're going from your 306. You're going to trade up to the 302. You get Puka. Got it. Cool. Yep. But let's say, Mike, you're getting the 306 to 407, and then the next actual pick you're getting is that 811. Okay. We're having a pretty different combo between the 407 and the 811. Now, I'm yep. not saying I wouldn't do it depending on what the juice is, okay? But right now, Mike, the difference is the 407 and the 502. Like, that's what you netted back. Yeah. That To me, Mike, straight up, a 407 and 502, the only way that that would be any difference at all is if you could tell me for sure at the 407 – there's a quarterback I really love in the lineup start 10 league. And then the 502, you're getting a skill player. 
Like that's yep. that's strictly the only way I'm giving any different value to the 407 and the 502. To be completely honest with you, dude. Like the skill players in that range are not are completely negligible. So if I get so when you think about it, you Mike, think about that for a second. You got to go up to the 302 and pick your person instead of what was at the 306. Here, Jalen Waddle to the Pukunakua side is is huge. But Mike, the 407 and 502 doesn't get you much back. And then I get an 811. You can have, dude. You can have my 25 second brother. You give me this third, and we are. Be good. We'll we're good. We're, I'm <laughs> like I don't. I'm not even the biggest fan of taking Joe Mixon, Mike, at the 811. But like, I'm still. We're good. You know, like we're good. We are we're good. plenty good. Yeah, I, I like I, the Drew I, side by a long shot, and I think this was the the trap, right? Yeah. Where it's it's. Oh, I don't think there's much difference between the 302 and the 306. Waddle and Puka, which if that's your analysis, that's fair. Like I'm not gonna fight you. Right. But the the, coinc- the the part is like I don't think there's much difference between the 407 and the 5- 502 to the extent that you're gonna toss in an eighth rounder and you mm. think that getting the second and the third swap somehow made up for it. That's where you start to lose it, right? For sure. That's where you started to misjudge the value differences because in reality 407 and 502 are great, but then there's not really that big of a fall off then between the 811. Right, so like the eight eleven no. and a generic twenty five second and twenty five third swap does not equal. Like we we lost the equation somewhere around there. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> this eight eleven. Because here's the thing, like truthfully, now the second I will say is at least liquidity. But I I would struggle, Mike, if forget the third, just giving up an eight eleven for a future second. Frankly, right? Yeah, I would struggle on the <clears throat> clock to do that too. I and really would. <laughs> so. Just context wise, think about that, and then you get the third bit thrown in here too. Like that's yeah. that, that's where it's crazy. You just talked about Jalen Polk, and I can tell you he's nowhere around the eight eleven in startup value. I was just gonna say, Mike, he's probably not until at least like the twelfth ish, maybe later. If you're feeling good and frisky, twelve, thirteen, possibly. Like point is, eight eleven is probably just outside of the generic first range, but it's definitely ahead of a regular generic second. Can I tell you where I really like this trade for him as a as a massive, massive potential difference? Yep. Is, Mike, if you end up having a good competitive roster and he ends up not, do you know what that 25 second and third becomes? There's a chance it literally becomes a single pick in its perfect, it's in its perfect world. It could become a singular pick. The, tw- the 212 versus the 301 where I took Jalen Polk in a league. That could be what the difference is. Okay. Yes. Yep. We're out of here. That's that's too much. Uh, just on those next. That's an Oklahoma drill gone wrong, buddy. That's what that felt like. For sure. All right, red words, Mike Lamar in the four hundred three, or do you want the one hundred four, and Chris Olave? Ooh. This is tough, man. This one this here is, is really see those four fires. That's what it is. That's spicy. This one's spicy as hell. There is a world, and Fizzle will definitely agree, where Lamar is really like that. Speaking of the... Uh, the I like that. Player, really like that. And he could be in consideration for <clears throat> Tier 1 of quarterbacks. Now, I have him just personally, just outside, but you know I can't get any higher than where I am already. <laughs> I can't put him in the big three, but there's a big four. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. I want to put it there. He's, he's definitely in that conversation. Big time. Uh, the 104 is interesting because I honestly don't know how the general community, like I know how our shit leagues are going to react right. if Jaden Daniels is the second or third overall pick next week. And Mike, I'm already, you never know, but maybe in the, the world we live in today, it seems like there's a lot of sources saying that it's almost a done deal that he's the number two going to the commanders. I, I'm not going to go like, there, but there, you're hearing a lot of rumblings about that being the case. Yeah. So hypothetically speaking, if this was Jaden Daniels and Chris Olave and Jaden Daniels with good draft capital for Lamar Jackson. What if it's Jaden Daniels this, going to the commanders right there? Boom, I done. say this trade becomes like 50-50 for me, like whether or not I would do it and right. be willing to up tier. It would be a very expensive up tier for me to do it from Daniels to pay a Chris Olave to get a Lamar. Adam in the world, though, Redwoods is really playing this gamble thing so far on this trade show. <laughs> He's playing this this pre-draft gamble uh, where we're at now versus where we might be in a week. Right. If that scenario doesn't happen and and this isn't, you know, Jane Daniels is, I don't know, not at the 104 for whatever reason, whether he doesn't fall that far or, you know, becomes a Drake May or a J.J. McCarthy or something along those lines or it's another wide receiver, by all fucking means, man, I would take Lamar. I would take the Lamar up to here. 
Mm. I love Drake May to death, but if you told me that's Drake May and fucking Olave for Lamar in this format with these quarterback scoring settings and warp, fucking Lamar, night and day. <laughs> so, <clears throat> with this warp line, th- is it still 50-50 or is it higher than 50-50 now? The, the problem is, I imagine this warp line is going to apply to all quarterbacks. Where I say, like, sure. I'm specific on, like, if this is Jaden Daniels, just where mm. I where I believe on what he can become. Now you're 50, to pay 50. the Chris Olave up tier is, is 50-50. If this is not <clears throat> Jaden Daniels for whatever reason, because he goes at 101 or 102 or 103 with that pick, and you're looking at your choice of a, a May, a McCarthy, a, a Dunze, Neighbors, Marv, I don't give a fuck who it is. Right. It's not Jaden Daniels, Adam. I'm it's, taking Lamar. <laughs> You know, we know that there's basically no – because he's going to go one-on-one and they have the weapons, there's no chance Caleb's going to fall to there. But it doesn't feel like that's even a remote possibility. I agree with you. I just wanted to I just wanted to run that by you real quick. What if it was? If Hypothetically, if it was Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams, I'll throw that in. 50-50. It's a 50-50. This show is two. not fucking saying that Caleb Williams is going to go at your 104 in your rookie year. No, but I just wanted to say, though, Mike, if you could put – Names, real quick, I'm going to hide this again. Right. If you could put names to these, and that says Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams, two 50, of the first four picks, yep. we're talking 50-50. But if that says Marvin Harrison Jr., if that says Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, no. Yeah, no. <clears throat> I'm pretty much with you. I will say, Mike, given the fact that the warp looks like this, I still probably will go like more... I think I'm probably just going to go with, with what I know today. 75-25, I want the Lamar side. Mike, the other thing is, Jaden Daniels has to actualize. Yes, it is a projection, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> Lamar Jackson, Mike, you know you know what I feel about Lamar in this warp? I feel fucking great, buddy. Look at that. Look it's at that, good. huh? It's pretty good. Like, I, I really do. <clears throat> and since he's had a contract, a lot of the other stuff has gone to bed. Ooh. I feel like he's going to play, right? Holy cow. Was that wind? No, that's thunder, bro. <laughs> Holy hell. I, I was like, what the hell's going on? I saw a little uh, movement on your screen. Let, let's just say me and my Mustang are glad I got home in time to do this trade show before. I'm pretty sure it's going to hail like a crazy out here. I wonder I wonder if that's like the earthquake. The day I went to New York, there was an earthquake. Um, I wonder oh, if that was like an earthquake. Were you the cause of it? I don't know. I don't know. I probably, to be frank with you. I, I'll say, Mike, I, I'm willing to... Can I say the uh, last part? No, I don't know why I took that away. I was trying to actually click on it, and I closed it. Here's the thing about Chris Olave, Mike. Until I see a quarterback come in, m- help him make the leap to the a leader tier, I feel like it's it's a it's a wide receiver worth sacrificing to actu- to get the actual quarterback because of how how high I see this line of receivers, right? Twenty wide receiver 24, 36, all at one or higher warp. Let me ask you from a roster construction, too, since I dug into his. Okay, what have we got? Yeah. Where he's at. Right. Uh, Before this, he was rocking Chris Olave and that 104 pick. Like, we know what was in there. Okay. Now, now afterwards, like, his team is set up with Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson with this quarterback. Goodness, dude. Goodness. Do you even give a shit about the the Chris Olave and the 104 part too much (laughs) anymore? And those are your two quarterbacks. I was already... I was already there because of just Lamar, like 75, 25. And the, and the 25 only stood there because if it was Jaden Daniels and, like, it, it, the odds are he could end up being there. But I don't want to bet on it. Like, if you tell me you're getting two elite quarterbacks in this format here, and what I'm losing to do that is is Chris Olave. Because assume that 104 pick is a quarterback. Let's just assume that. Mm-hmm. What you're losing is Chris Olave. If I'm losing Chris Olave to get two elite quarterbacks, Mike, I'm losing Chris Olave almost every day of the week in this type of work format. Like, <laughs> right. done, done. Push, pushing yourself over the edge just to get the deal done. What's the rest of his roster look like now? So we got Lamar and Josh Allen. What's his receiver at? So he's very built, kind of just how you and I would build this team out. Um, it's not a juggernaut by any stretch of the imagination, but that's your start, right? Those are your two quarterbacks with this warp. Like, that's something I'm That's the foundation, with. I feel like, in this league, right? I know I'm going to be in contention. Um, wide receivers now left. Zay Flowers, Cooper <clears throat> Cup. Um Jacoby Myers, and then just a bunch of dudes, you know, That's the, the K.J. Osborne type, right? That's fine. Michael Wilson. Uh, running backs, though, Jacobs, Warren, Chase Brown, Kendra Miller. Like, you're just shooting your shots on these kind of guys, right? Mm-hmm. And then the tight ends, like, who gives a shit? You found Jake Ferguson, and you're just going to ride him until the wheels fall off. Right. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those teams where, <clears throat> um, man, 
Interesting, though, Mike, he has Jared Goff at quarterback three. I'll say this, too. I think the next play could be move him, moving Jared Goff to try to get into that receiver line and be comfortable with a less a lesser quarterback three with this type of goon gooned up yep. quarterback room. That's my next tear, play. Tear down from Jared Goff. Anybody who thinks he has like a lot of certainty with the contract <laughs> extension upcoming and all that stuff. For Can I take like him down stuff? to Rodgers? Can I take him down to Stafford? Those type things. Bingo. Yep. And let me get a uh, wide receiver that I can plug into my lineup yep. on top. Exactly. And just keep that train moving. And same thing, he's still got the 205, 305. Like, can I package that in the lineup half PPR? Like, can that buy me a wide receiver, even a crusty one? <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, – can, can that kind of shit buy me a Mike Evans or Keenan Allen, some old vet who's just going to produce I could throw him in? And now I have a foundation of a roster with usable pieces that I'm starting every single week and two absolute just fucking hammers at quarterback. Yep, I'm – I'm with it, man. I'm with that trade, uh, personally. Now, yep. I will say, if you're F. Uh, Parisi, whoever. It, F. Parisi. If, uh, if Jaden Daniels ends up being a top 10 quarterback, you're going to really like having that side. Uh, Chris Olave to the 403 is a wild difference, but I like the security of the single asset versus the two in that trade. All right, Mike, rusty tromboners. I love, I love Thanks. trades from the, can I tell you, Mike, that, uh, I was pretty disappointed when this trade went through because I went to my DMS and I had a monstrosity with me getting Mahomes as well. Oh, similar to this. And I was just, I didn't, I didn't, I was literally on a plane with no, Mike, can I tell you, I tried, I tried frontier to New York this time and it, everything was good about it except for the fact that there's no Wi-Fi on the plane. So I get, I land and this is what I saw. And cheap, I was just like, that's frontier, man. It's what you get. It's what you get for about forty bucks round trip. But uh, this trade here is Patrick Mahomes, Noah Brown, Marquise Brown, Israel Abanacanda, and a twenty-five fifth. And Rob is receiving on the opposite side. Adonai Mitchell, uh, Malik Washington. We got Trevor Lawrence. So it's a down tier from Mahomes to Lawrence. Twenty-five first and second of B Halls, who is a contender that has moved his future picks. So where are you at here, buddy? Big boy trade going now. Big boy trade. Very much now, so. Very much so. Even in this league, you know, you and I are both in it. Yep. Both playing it. Have yep. since inception. <laughs> yep. Um, Mahomes for Trevor Lawrence in the 25 first. Where you got in this league? Even with star 13, I think I'd be willing to, to roll that first up to Mahomes, frankly. I, I, I could make the case for the other side because there's so many starters, but if I could, if I'm anywhere near being able to afford it, I'll take Mahomes. Uh, I'm kind of with you. Uh, even though, like, B. Hall is a contender, uh, got a decent enough roster. Even He's not a I lock say, to like, win or anything like that. Not a, I mean? not a lock to win, but also not a lock to be dog shit because we do have some <laughs> real There's shitters. some true turds in this one. There's some true shitheads in this format. <laughs> There's some, some terrible, terrible mm-hmm. teams in here. For sure. Uh, I would say that I'm, I'm with you. Like, even in this format, I think I'd be willing to go to Mahomes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood or Adonai? Adonai for me, too. Even though production-wise, sure. you could definitely see a, a world where, for the next couple of years, Hollywood's over Adonai. Absolutely. We don't know what Adonai's landing spot draft capital are, obviously, as well, too. So Now, if you're Eric, like even though that might be a loss for you, to get the stack, are you willing to take the L a little bit? Sure. I'm still, I'm still, I will still lean getting this Hollywood and Mahomes side for losing Adonai here. Like basically, if I'm losing Ad Nine, I'm still at the the T law on a first price. I'm still comfortable getting them a home side now. Um, Noah Brown, a Bandicanda, I could give a shit less. I mean, this is where we start getting the problems. Is the second for? I mean, like I I I defended and liked Noah Brown last year, but it wouldn't have been for a future second. I mean, you know, <laughs> ever right? Like I might I might have said a third if you're contending and really need a body at tops. Right. Uh, um, I can't. The hard part now is basically Malik Washington in a second for the, the Banacanda, Noah Brown in a fifth. But Is taking the L that big from those pieces <laughs> worth it for what the perceived upgrade is from Mahomes to Trevor Lawrence in that first? I, I think, Mike, it's debatable. I think if I think if we get a Mahomes resurgence, like, for example, they got, they got Hollywood coming over now. If they end up drafting a receiver, let's say, if Mahomes takes that step next year to be – much more like the quarterback we've seen in warp mm-hmm. we're gonna have you're gonna feel Different like man you got it you, you're gonna feel like you really got a great deal on this trade but i'll just say and rob i believe is in kind of a rebuilding stage and yes. i think i think i'll say it this way when you're 
going to try to do. And Rob, what he's trying to do is rebuild and get assets where you look at this league. They're 25 first, Mike. I was actually going through it. I've got two. I think he now has two. Someone else has two or three. Like they're kind of picked over. So when you're trying to get out of value, the Mahomes has in a, in a format like this and you're rebuilding. Okay. You're getting a top 12 quarterback. Roughly you're getting a 25 first from someone else that has those first. You're getting a second. You're getting a young receiver. You're getting off of Hollywood and a bunch of shit. I, I don't hate it for him to be frank with you. Like I think sometimes you gotta, as much as you don't like Mahomes, like I love having Mahomes, Mike, but there's times where you just have to, you got to part ways. I've got, I have, I have an agenda of getting the snowball rolling and I can't do that without putting Mahomes down the hill. I'm with you. And especially in these kind of leagues with all these uh, shitheads in here, sometimes you got to be pretty aggressive in getting that started. A lot of people look and go, I'll never trade in Patrick Mahomes. Right. Well, enjoy purgatory from here on. You're on. never going to do anything but not contend in this league. You know? Right. Interesting league too. Like I was looking at it, uh, I made a push last year, didn't end up winning it. I don't think <laughs> this is gonna be a fun. This is gonna be a fun one, I think. For uh, well, you and I, right at the top. That's man. what I was gonna no say. How you, you look at it, dynasty value, redraft total on the lab. It's a uh, it's Adam and Mike show one two. <laughs> I, I I was just gonna say, I think this is gonna be one of those where you never know. I mean, there's all, all all kinds of things can happen with injuries and the way that stuff goes, but this is one of those leagues I would expect us to be having a a nice showdown at some point during the playoffs. I'm just really glad that I'm not heading into the season without my own. You you said 25 first are picked over. I still got my own band. <laughs> I, still I know. got that flexibility. You do. Because I'd be pissing my pants if uh, Can I tell I'm you facing off with Adam and I ain't got no 25 first to compete with him. Fuck that. Yeah, and you know what's better? Can I give you what's better? It's when you have your own. And there's never a better first to own, Mike. There's not a singular first I'd rather own than roster baiters. <laughs> give me that roster baiter first. To go along with mine, I could buy anything in the world, I feel like, with those, you those packages. You know he's inevitably going to fail <laughs> and make a terrible rebuild. I, I will say, Cody's one of those teams, Mike, when I look at this team, it's like, it's not dead. And knowing how Cody can kind of maneuver, I could see him, like, effing around and together. being in the freaking playoffs and being anno- annoying, right. annoying-ass team with this squad. But yeah, I think when I look at it now, and Rob is doing a good job of getting closer to the basement with his redraft total. When you look at his starters and the, the actual assets he has, I think that was, this was a move, necessary move. One thing I will say, Mike, that B-Hall first is one of the first I want. You want those mids. Like this is a first that could go either way. And in this 25 class, if it goes my way, I'm feeling pretty good. So I, I, I think when I look at the, at the trade as a whole, which side do you want? If I had to pick one. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go with Eric. I agree, I, but I, I will say, Mike, I think Eric's team is just good enough to make the case for taking his side. He definitely needs a worse. lot. He, he definitely needs a lot of depth. But this is one of those teams where it's good enough on the top end. If you can avoid injuries, you can just backfill with the cheapies. You know, <laughs> just play the waiver wire and just backfill with a bunch of bunch of turrets, man. Right? <laughs> it's, it's a good thing he's doing the deep waiver dives on his right. show every single week. <laughs> Don't, don't be don't be podcast. don't be surprised this year if there's some people being omitted um and <laughs> happen to make their way into next next week's you know well especially now he's in all these shit leagues like, right that's what i'm saying to see if eric just hold a few back for himself huh damn eric you didn't mention this guy last week what the hell happened yeah, yeah. you added him in like be, seven leagues what happened it's a good thing on the lab we can just monitor that in every right. single league like oh, oh it's gonna, man eric hold on week three for this guy Eric added seven shares of this player. Yeah. Didn't talk about him on the waiver wire pod. What the hell? I love it too because uh, he offered to take over a lot of these orphans of these leagues <laughs> and uh, help me commission a lot of them. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, every single one of them I got him into is like pre NFL draft. And fucking Eric's like, uh, you know, I don't mind them. I just don't want to do a lot. And I'm like, well, surprise. Here's seven more. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> gotcha. Mike, this is it. This is the. Uh... The Jalen Hurts and C.J. Stroud thing, Mike. So let's just go over this one. 12-team Superflex PPR, half tight and premium lineup start 10, dirty dozen. Shout out, new patron. Okay? New patron coming in here. Got, you love to see it, man. I love to see this. You'd this is Jalen Hurts and Rashad White or C.J. Stroud in the 208 in this class. Mike, this where stands easiest, you? This is the easiest trade I think we'll grade all day. We haven't seen the last couple, so... I, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right, but I'm going to hold off on confirming that. All right. Uh, I This one to me is a no-brainer, man. 
Hurts like I would, I would take Stroud, given easily. given the class, Mike, the two the, the classes of running backs in this twenty four class, the two hundred eight to Rashad White to me is just Rashad White. Smash. It's 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 pretty sizable. At what point in this class would you be willing to take a pick? Two hundred two, two hundred one. I think probably literally two hundred one. You want like that that potential first round wide receiver who exactly. Just can't can't quite make it and it's like lad or troy franklin or lad or ad and i like can i tell you why it's because like if i go to 202 or 203 i could just see a i see a world mike where if this is a post nfl draft i assume landing spots and draft capital it just it feels like a cutoff right there i'm starting to kind of feel like that could happen and not that it's actually the case but I, i feel like there's a chance where there's a couple guys that we really like in this class that go to landing spots that aren't the great like it's not gravy and Maybe they're later in round two, and you're like, oh, this class doesn't now, quite feel the same. This will never happen, but I did the mock draft stream last night, and I I had the Vikings. So How I great was the, that? And then I love that the simulator wouldn't take a quarterback on no, three different simula- picks. The simulator fucked it up. I traded Justin Herbert from the Chargers to the Vikings, and I paid three first plus, like a lot of stuff. Yeah, it was pick right? 11, pick uh, 23, 23, and then the, the 25 first. first. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, some, like, thirds and some shit like that. But anyways, you're thinking PFF Simulator is going to go, hey, we just traded away Justin Herbert for the Chargers, so when they we draft need, for him, they're going to take We don't McCarthy, yeah. What'd they do? They took Pass two wide twice. receivers in the first round. So we did a rookie mock at the end, right? And nobody wants to touch Adonai Mitchell <laughs> having to be the second receiver that went to the Chargers at pick 23. Nobody <laughs> wants to touch him in the first round of rookie drafts, right? He's the second guy on a low volume passing offense who, who a team that wants have to run the ball, <laughs> right? A team that wants to run the ball has no one to throw to him. They got Easton Stick when low passing volume, be great. But I mean, but I guess the point is here that that's just that side. Like, forget the fact that we have the Jalen Hurts and C.J. Stroud thing going on too. Adam, if I told you if in this format, lineup start ten half PPR or full PPR half point tight end premium, like it's constructed here. Right. If you were to even take the Rashad White side the Rashad White piece, and throw it on the C.J. Stroud in the 208. Yeah. Would you rather have that or Jalen Hurts? So you're saying, oh, wow. So you're saying it's Jalen Hurts versus C.J. Stroud, Rashad White, and 208? Mm-hmm. That's a lot tougher. I could make the case for C.J. Stroud there. I'm probably uh, – you'd have to – but can I say that that's the – you'd have to go there. It'd have to be three for one yeah. for me to be like, all right, we're having a combo. Like, you know, straight up – this 208 who knows what i can do with it on draft day right right maybe i can add it to something and get another legitimate piece now i'm like dude doing a real three for one it just ah this could be a tough i'm saying with where i'm at right now like you I still like would take J- you would still take jalen hurts though i, I would take fucking jalen hurts i could make the case I, I could make the case i just in that point mike see it feels like let me say the reason i say i couldn't do that is because i also like i know what the market says i'm i'm weighing that in it's like this is just That's absolute fair buffoonery because yes the market on cj stroud's electric right now <laughs> that's why i couldn't do it not to the point that you're making where you're like nah jalen hurts is him um but mike if this as assembled i just have such a hard time right now believing that cj stroud is going to put up a top three top two season that wins the league and jalen hurts is not a at minimum a difference maker mike like, yeah. let, let's even let's even go to the let's even go to the scenarios mike where let's say cj stroud remove all the things that you know Okay, all the stuff we've done, we're going to do 40 tomorrow, a second dive into the quarterbacks. Let's rewind it two weeks. <clears throat> Let's say that I told you C.J. Stroud is quarterback three and A.J. Hur- and J- A.J. I just read the A.J. jersey hawk. I almost said A.J. <laughs> Hurts. Jalen Hurts is quarterback five. Like, let's say C.J. Stroud pops off. Let's just say it happens. Mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts isn't going to not pop off. I'm putting him at quarterback five, right? Like Still pops off. Uh, even if you gave me the future cast, I'll take the Rashad White side here. I think. <laughs> yes. Yep. And that's if that's if that's a shit went against the grain. Like. Yes. That. I can't do this right now. This is just the C.J. Stroud thing for me. Um, I like C.J. Stroud quite a bit. I love him as a player, as a prospect, as a quarterback. What he did in Houston was tremendous last year. I think there's a case to be made. He's going to be a very good NFL quarterback this year. He might even be a very good fantasy asset this year. But I've seen Jalen Hurts do it too much. To also give me the running back security or someone that was a better finisher at the running back position last year and a 208 pick in this class where you want to talk about hit rates on the second round, Mike, it's just not that great. So that's where I'm at. I mean, I don't, I don't. I mean her, her last three fucking years in a row, Jalen Hurts over 20 fantasy points per game. 
Yep. What more do you want? From <laughs> what? What more do you want from him? Apparently, Mike, we want a lot more from him. Like, I guess, man. Apparently, when you tweak your knee and you're just not quite <laughs> to the level of MVP like you were the year before, all of a sudden you're <clears throat> junk. How about how about this now? What if I told you, Mike? What if I told you that not just that, okay? That Rashad White line is, is as valuable good. as potentially some of these quarterbacks. What if I told you that? Like regardless, third. regardless, unless one of them actually is the like number one quarterback overall, which that I will bet any amount of money would be better chance to be Jalen Hurts than C.J. Stroud. Unless you're getting that, the running back is probably going to set this trade off. Mike, you're looking at the top 12 running backs are like 1.7, 1. 1.6 oh, nice. warps, right? Like they're just, the, oh. that, that green line is literally ahead of that red line almost the entire time, brother. Like that's crazy to me. This is keeping my head on a swivel too. Breaking news. Just won something. From Ultimate Autograph. Ultimate no, what do we got? Ricky Waters signed Eagles jersey. Oh, Mike, you got to be Zay. jealous about that. The Ricky oh, Waters well, Eagles. Hey, Woo! We already got something in the works, man. He, he's a 49ers fan, so if I ever win anything San Francisco. Brock Purdy, you guys just, that's an immediate flip-flop. The swap. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> swap these. So, I thought that was kind of cool because he tagged me in there. He had to tell me. Pretty cool. Uh, well, by the I way. I like see people win shit on there. Oh, big time. Mike, I, this is, uh, we're moving on, right? This is enough said. Yeah, we're done with that okay. trade. All right, thank I you. I was done 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I, I was too. I just I want I needed to make sure we're moving on. AJ Hawk jersey is back. Evan Ingram, DJ Moore, James Cook, Debo Samuel, Kenneth Walker, being acquired for Jordan Addison, 203, 109, and we've got 225 first. One's from Free Fries. The other one's from Techniques. I like that Techniques. See that? See how you did that there? Mm-hmm. Okay, Mike. This is a lineup, start 10. It's a uh, full point for the tight end premium, so two points per catch. Twelve. Uh, it's a 12-team super flex, full PPR league. Fantasy football, G-O-T. I mean, Mike, uh, when I see what he's getting up top, there's some assets there which you're like, ah, you could debate on what their values are, okay? Let's just say that. They're in that right. more middling tier. But, Mike, on the bottom, I'm losing the 109, and then I got to kind of do some digging because these – 25 future first are where I really wonder, um, given they're not a part of this trade. Where where does your brain go just like immediately off the rip when you're looking at this trade? So immediately I try to match stuff up, right? Big right, time. So the That's the quickest thing, way to do it. Let's start canceling. Uh, the 109, is there anybody on the top side you could cancel out? Who's the most valuable piece on the I think 109 side? is probably ahead of DJ Moore. If I, uh, DJ Moore is probably ahead of the 109, if I'm being honest. But that's is that in the same range, do you think? Possibly. I think, I, I would say maybe more like, uh, but is Debo Samuel too? I don't think the 109 is quite Debo Samuel. Like it's, it's I'd rather have the 109 than Debo Samuel, right? I'd rather I feel have like the it's 109 than Kenneth Walker or James. Cook James too. Cook, right? I, th- I think the one on that's why the 109 is tough because I think I'd, I think I would lean DJ more over the 109, but then I would ha- I'd rather the 109 over everything else in an individual basis by far. So let's go DJ more in the 109. And oh, no okay. matter where you fall on it, whether it's my side, close Adam's enough, side, sure, right. whatever, it's close enough. We'll cancel that one out. Okay. Now Jordan Addison, Jordan Addison, or <laughs> pick a player from the top. Well, that's what I was. That's where it's really tough, Mike. Because my first way of canceling was like DJ Moore and Jordan Addison cancel out. Then, <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say. Then you're really fucked. But let's not do that. So, let's so, let, so let's go with the first one we had. Let's go DJ Moore and the 109. Jordan, right, Addison, Jordan Addison, and it's got to be Debo and a plus or Debo Debo and Ingram. Could, could I could get by, I could get behind it. I mean, there's a full point tight end premium, so Evan Ingram's not just no slouch, but you and I like to play tight ends don't matter along with Koopa, but still, like I could see that. Debo what about what about Ingram. Debo? Would you rather have Debo and, and Ingram or Addison in the two oh three? Can we cancel those can we cancel that out? Or is that too much on the two oh three side? I think I'd I'd rather go Addison in the two oh three to be honest. Okay. The only thing that I makes me think it. about this is like in this format, I'd have to see what the warp says. But I might be willing to do that if the Warp was high enough for tight end because I think Ingram yeah. could be him. Could it's be. close enough, but I, I I think I think I'm I'm with you in a vacuum. I definitely take the 203 and Addison ahead of Debo and Ingram. I agree with that. So what's this one? Uh, the goat Game of Thrones. What about with a tight end line like that? I'd send that. I'd send that 203 for that tight end line. Heck yeah. I mean it's okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> Mike, we got 12. We got 12 tight ends ahead of one point like two five. Yeah, we got. I got the I got the rookie fever. Well, I know. That's why I'm saying I'm trying to get it out of you. I'm trying to get some get some water in this man. You know, let's get some water in my guy here. 
I think what because here here if we just did that if we canceled out Ingram and Debo and Addison in the two hundred three we got DJ Moore in the one hundred nine off because here yeah. now is the question Mike would you rather have James, James Cook James and Cook Kenneth Wa- exactly first. I think it's close enough and we can have the conversation here based on those those two for two right generically it's a 50 50 split now let's dive into where those first are that i think is going to end up being the telltale for me so we got tech next redraft total pretty good no real picks in 2024 other than one second no picks in 25 obviously um start at the quarterbacks adam okay i mean it's it's okay kyron james connor jamar chase chris olave jalen waddle brandon Ayuk, jason is this uh techniques yep Okay. Yeah, I I'd mean, say it's a def- decent enough squad. It is. It's a playoff team. Yeah, it's a, it's a playoff team. And then Mike Free Fries, uh, based on redraft total, is a country mile number one team. You're looking at Ooh. Lamar, Gibbs, Barkley, CD, Tyreek, Cole Komet, yeah. Hollywood Brown, Deontay, A. Rich, Goff. So if you're looking at this now, kind of feeling out where those first are going to be, <clears throat> I would say these are playoff contender-ish first. Probably, unless unless. Some unless one of Something these teams experiences that bad luck, you're probably looking at 107 to 112 ranges. Yep. And then I'm looking at AJ Hawk jersey, pretty good redraft total, number one dynasty total. <laughs> now, granted, he this is this is after this trade, so he put all them he put all these players on here to get there. But yeah, with you right now, you're looking at a team that is sitting up: Jalen Hurts, Kenneth Walker, James Cook. Justin Jefferson, DJ Moore, George Kittle, Tank Dell, Debo, Evan Ingram, Kyler Murray, um, and is still sitting with the 103 and the 110, 201, 207, Mike. Yep. Um, I and like a couple of 25 first. I'm with I it. Like it. I, I will say this. I will say this. If, if this trade could have been done without the 25 first and the running backs, I would have definitely preferred to do that. Take but, those out. Addison, the 109, 203 for DJ Moore, <laughs> Evan Ingram, Debo Samuel. Yes, and I know that might sound crazy to some, but I, I would rather have done that personally. And I had to hold on to the first until we got closer to the season. Can I tell you why? You have because now he would have had now he would have had four twenty five firsts. Like he broke up two of the four to get this done. Like four twenty five. You get you throw someone four twenty five first, I basically can go buy anything. Mm-hmm. That's where it's tough for me, but. I, at the same time, one, I don't know that that trade existed. Like, I don't know that this person actually makes that trade without getting this whole package, right? Right, right. And it's a hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then the second thing would be like, uh, I, I think James Cook. Uh, we did a we did a BDG buy or sell, Mike, and one Andrew I think was buy and Nick was sell, and it's like James Cook. I could feel. I feel with James Cook, he's very polarizing. I could see a range of outcomes where in this new offense that's a little more run heavy, James Cook is just the man. But also with the red zone usage, I'm like, I don't I don't really know what to make of James Cook. I know Kenneth Walker for me is not someone I want to send a first for. But if I look at the totality of what you're doing with the picks you still have left, I I'm okay making this move, frankly. Hypothetically, uh this uh goatee goatee, got e, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Uh Still has Javante Williams on the roster. Now, if you'd thrown Javante Williams up to the top side, you got oh. one more just running back for, like, insurance, would you have done that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I st- just I thinking think- about, like, how to break it down and how I would have tweaked it. I'm, I'm with you, though. Like, if, if hypothetically, if I could have kept those 25 firsts and just dropped the two running backs, I would be much more in and waited a little bit longer. I will say it's pro- – that – that's what I would have tried to do. It might be too. It might have been too tough to get done, Mike. Because what I'm looking at is this is someone that's just pick hoarding to I mean, 105, 109, 111, 203, 210. This is now 425 first. This is, this might have been what it took to get it done. Um, you still have enough assets. You still have enough picks and things that you can build the team you're looking to to build. But I just the way I think about it, Mike, when I look at a team like this, this is just a point. Uh, AJ Hawk jersey for you as well as anyone listening. If I see a team that wants to do what he's doing, which is go goady whatever, if I know that you want to get a bunch of picks, if you want to hoard picks, and I have the picks, I'm the leverage. I have I the leverage. You, you you come yeah, it's the it's the price line name your price tool, Mike. You know, <laughs> I, I'm making I'm establishing what the hell the price is. Okay, not you. That's the one thing I would say. So now, granted, if you love James Cook and Kenneth Walker, and this was this was you doing that, cool. I just for me. The last point I'll make is just when I look at the situation, I'm the one that has what you need, not vice versa. I'm with you. I'm with you. I just I love this man. 
price line name your tool. <laughs> so price line name your price tool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> love that price line. Give us a shout out, man. Come on, give us a, give us a promo code, South Harmon. Yeah. You know, get on that. <clears throat> Ten team Superflex plus IDP, Mike plus IDP. Now, granted, this is probably the uh, generic IDP. Yeah, right. Especially in ten team, but PPR. So that's, a, that's a fancy way of me saying weak ass IDP. That's a, that's that's the way of just saying that the defensive players don't matter. You want to talk about tight ends don't matter. Shout out to that's episode two, Mike. You shout uh, out to episode cool. two of uh, Grinding the Edge. Great episode. But um, yeah, you want to talk about IDP don't matter. It's probably in this format. But half point tight end premium lineup start nine, Mike. The Misfits, man. I feel like the, I feel like we kind of are, all of a sudden with the Misfits being the name, it feels like we just really shit on this league too much. Like that's that's messed up. Game. Yeah, but no, ten team superflex IDP PPR half tight end premium lineup start nine. Mike, do you want Ayuk a twenty five first from Dante W in the four hundred two or CMC in a twenty five second? Ooh, ten team makes it tough for sure. I'm gonna pull up the warp, but. Uh, McCaffrey's probably a hammer, a big fucking hammer in this league. Uh, by the way, this is multi-year, but McCaffrey is one of the guys that could be really high up there. <laughs> like the high. <laughs> I will say, though, Mike, interestingly enough, IDP doesn't not matter. To an extent. I mean, it's it's better than I would have thought and when I just saw this initially. Um, I was expecting all them color, like the, the Easter colors, like the DB, right. the linebacker, purple. I was expecting those to be really, really low, and they're not. So it's not they're, they're not dead, they're, but they're not great. Right? They're not as bad as uh, you know, tight end ones. <laughs> yeah, because if you look at what really doesn't matter in this league, Mike, what is it? Tight ends. Tight ends. <laughs> no one gives a shit. <laughs> um, Unless you got the elite guy, then he's okay. Um Yeah, so now here's what I want to discuss. A couple things. One, Brandon Ayuk is we'll see if he ends up getting traded or not. That's an interesting piece to this yep. secondly wide receiver line is actually pretty darn pretty damn good top 12 receivers are giving you one running backs probably cmc and his greatest could give you probably a two right mm-hmm. so a one warp like a top 12 option like iuk plus a 25 first to get off of the running back or do you want the cmc in the 25 second in this uh in this one here now i think we need to go through the the lab and take a look at dante's team too it's gonna be tough too because it's idp like how much factors in there but just assume they don't exist okay. i would say i would be very on board with scooter getting <laughs> chris mccaffrey if my team was ready to rock like this year yes <laughs> you know i will pay that iuk in the first part Yep. The problem is when I pull up his team on the lab. He just ain't. Uh, he's not. Not even close like, to. I mean, he gets a nice dynasty total. He gets a nice redraft total. You know, the the best in the league at both. But then when you actually look at the roster, Aaron Rodgers and Sam Darnold now are your starting quarterbacks. I know it's 10-team super flex, but Jesus Christ, not where I want to start, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, you, you know, do you know why I like this now all of a sudden a lot for Scooter? Is because if I'm going to move off of Christian McCaffrey, what I don't want to do is have in a 10-team league like this where hammers can just, like, tsunami somebody. I, I, here, how about I send it to Dante? Like, Dante ain't going to do nothing with this CMC share, right? Oh, oh, I had that backwards, man. I was looking at Dante. Yeah, Dante. I'm sending Christian McCaffrey away. If I'm going to do Fuck that yeah. on a team that's really good. Poison pill them. Here, Dante. Tell you what, buddy. Scooter's you were looking team, at, on the other hand. Scooter's team's fantastic. already loaded. Yes. It's already loaded. It stays with Ayuk and now. Basically, as long as Dante's team is everything that it's expected not to be. Uh, really early uh, first. Yeah. Uh, 101 plus. My bad. My bad. I mixed that up. I had a little trade dyslexia <laughs> there. Because here, here's what you have, right? Dante's team's dog shit. Scooter's team is fantastic. Fuck it. Yes. Because Scooter yeah. still has Burrow, Gibbs, Jamar Chase, A.J. Brown, Sam Laporta, Chris Olave, Brandon Ayuk now, and then Justin Herbert at the Herbert. Superflex option. He also has Brock Purdy. Um now, what he's lacking is running back two, right? But he still has on the bench. Just just think about this, Mike, on the bench. Pittman, Debo, Cooper Cup, New Hopkins still, okay? But guess In what you have? Three. Guess what you have? A couple seconds to shoot your shot on running back, as well as now four 25 first. first yep. I'll go – you know what I'll do, Mike, is I, I don't need to have Christian McCaffrey in the risk of him. I'll just – here, Dante's first is in play. And I'll get a wider Coach, just – Coach Wilkerson's first is in play. K. Cottonell's first is in play. I'll even throw you my first. Like you basically have the leverage to go by whatever running back you want to be alongside Gibbs. Um, and I see he has Nick Chubb there, and 
I'm rooting for you, buddy, but I'm I'm not banking on him being the uh, the difference maker you need in ten team. Yeah. Yep. I'm with this you. is easy this though. Is this is stupid. Mike, yeah. remember when we remember when you said we we might have had the the trade? I said oh, I didn't know for sure what the trades would look like, but I think I found the one. I think this I is think the one. This one is. I think it is. This is the poison pill, man. You convince someone that's got nothing. That maybe Christian McCaffrey can change all your luck. Maybe that's all you need. It's just Christian McCaffrey. Maybe you introduce no, no. him to the warp tool, and you're like, "Listen, you see this? Christian McCaffrey's he's Neo. He's the one. He's, he's gonna put you over the top, buddy. He's Neo. Go for that championship real soon. Nah. R.I.P. R.I.P. That, oh, that's oh, rough, man. man. That I feel bad, Scooter. Damn, Scooter. Dante. Dante. Way to make your uh, debut. Dante's peak. You know what Dante bought? Dante bought his peak, man. That was Dante's peak right there. Don't, don't show Dante this show. Never trade with you again. Well, at least you got the singular best trade that you could have before you showed him. He milked the cow for all that ad. That's crazy. That's terrible. I feel horrible for Dante. <laughs> I love that, though. Dante. Oh, Don, th- that's how you build orphans right there, Mike. That's how <laughs> orphans are formed. Scooter will be posting in the Discord here, you know. Twelve months looking for somebody to take. Looking over for someone should. to take over. I know it's only a ten-team league. It's got IDP in it, but I need somebody to take over a squad. Please. We reduce payments just so we can fill this thing. It Fucking doesn't. It, it doesn't have a first until twenty-six, but it'll be okay. <laughs> That's savage. Bro. That ain't right. Speaking oh, of savage and savage, if you want to come be a part of our Discord and flex like Scooter did, AJ Hawk Jersey did, everybody did. Patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. Also, Mike, we are fastly approaching the NFL draft. Yep. Make sure you're tapped in to the NFL draft here on South Harmon. And the best part, Mike, wait till this. After the draft, you know what we bring back? One of my favorite times. Best time to be a Savage member. Savage semester, baby. We bring back the chalkboard. We get everybody to class. Make sure you bring your hat and your beverage because we are going to be having a good time, buddy. Hat and beverage. Hat and beverage, I love it. Uh, incredible giveaways too. Uh, Fizz will be putting them out this week. Oh yeah, for the Real draft. Talk to yep. Him. Yep. Got some dope ass shit. Uh, some stuff I won. Some dope ass shit from science shit. Some dope ass <laughs> yeah. shit from science shit. You know. <laughs> uh, look, let's go. Uh, the Mike Tyson photo will not be in there though. Sorry to those of you who know. I will say. I'll try that out of my cold dead fucking hands. I will say Mike is really cleaned up on these box breaks, but. It sounds like he's being half stingy with uh, what's what's leaving, right? Like the uh, I will say that that you're not giving away. Are you giving away? You're not giving away the Ocho Cinco hel- helmet, are you? No, that they, thing was fucking. Cl- I, I don't. I'm not. I hate the Bengals, and that thing was clean I, as hell. I I am a man of the people, though. You get us to fifty thousand YouTube subscribers, and you'll give it away. <laughs> hit the subscribe. I'll give that motherfucker away. That's I'm sure you would. The, it's going to take a long time to get us to 50k subs, and uh, by then Mike will find himself a new jersey or a new helmet that well, he likes just, instead. It's just you know, a, it's a matter of how much you want it. All right, <laughs> got to earn it. The other problem is for a single human being to find a way to get us to 50k subs is about as undoable. Like it's hard. It would be harder to do that. Even <laughs> you could, you have a better chance of winning that league with Dante's team than you do Tell as a Frank. single human <laughs> getting to 50k subs for us. Duh. Tell a friend, drop that shit in every league chat. I don't care. Do what drop you got to do. Listen, you want this? Come get it. Hell uh, you, want, but, you want a chance at some free Mike Pays postage, signed Ocho Cinco fucking authentic, full that thing, size, that thing heavy is, motherfucking. That thing was serious. <laughs> <though>. so, <laughs> you could see by the gloss, like the gloss on it. It was just, it was oh, so yeah. clean. It was really, really good. Oh, yeah. And in case that, uh, in case that uh, signature, which... I'm going to take care of this thing. But if it ever came off, like, I could just strap that helmet on, right? We're good to go. <laughs> Big uh, time. Back out on the field. Big time. Pair me up, coach. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's rock. Put a visor on that thing. Mike doesn't even need the shades anymore, you know? Nope. Be good. <laughs> get him a, get him, get him a dark visor. <laughs> I might go out and buy a, an authentic helmet, not one that's signed. But Bro, you get the Oakley the visor, visor, the real Oakley visor, and now now you're talking Oakley, so, like, Oakley, come – Come talk can to I us, get, man. Can I get the quarterback one, too, that's got the headset in there, too, oh, so I could hear you talk? Just, that's ridic- That would be ridiculous. I'd just do a whole fucking trade show with a... <laughs> in a helmet? <laughs> in a real helmet? <laughs> People will be like, what is actually happening fucking right now? Fucking beard hanging out the chin strap. Let's go. I look like oh. Jason Kelsey. <clears throat> oh. That's, we'll, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> we, we don't need Mike having to have his beard shaved again, all right? That was, like, that was one of the worst times Ooh. in South Harmon. I remember when Mike sent me the picture... 
<laughs> I was like, damn, that, that was crazy. And they, what, you had to get fitted for a... Uh, respirator. Respirator, that's right. Yep. That's... You ever shave a husky? <laughs> Mike, I'll say... That's kind of what it looks like. I felt for you like I felt for Dante um, right now when you sent me Whoops. that picture. Like, this isn't how it's supposed to go, man. <laughs> this is not yeah. how we're supposed to be. Nah, nah. But with all that being not said, like uh, Mike, I thought, I thought overall this trade show... Like we basically had some pretty solid deals, right? We had some discussions that were pretty good. We discussed one, the process play up early. We discussed how you got to look at warp. Trade two was just warp, like warp All straight up. Then we talked trade three, understanding startups. I mean, that's going back to the roots. Trade four is just uh, give me the security of Lamar. Trade five was rebuilder and contender and best ball. And then all of a sudden we got the flex worthy territory. Like we started really just this, this, this fast train just started going off the rails, man. And it got ugly. So, uh, Full throttle. if you want to be on the trade show, we already said this patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. Otherwise go down, hit that like, uh, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let us know. Do you want to see Mike without a beard? Do you want to see the Chad Ocho Cinco in the giveaway? It's not going to happen either way, but we'd love to hear you tell us. All that being said, we'll see you back here. Same time, same place next week on the Dynasty Trade Show. We're out of this thing. Peace. Peace.